Joining us today is Professor Stephen Riley to give us an update on the current status of the COVID-19 pandemic. Thank you for joining us. You're welcome. Can you give us an update where we're at with the COVID-19 pandemic and what the different patterns are that we can see around the world? I think we can probably um, think about the patterns in kind of four different types. We've got um, some of the early affected populations who, through a variety of different measures, have achieved high levels of control. So that would apply certainly to mainland China, to South Korea, um, and Hong Kong and Singapore. And then I think um, in if we kind of move across to Europe, um, then we've got uh, kind of a relatively large population that are, are undergoing stringent interventions, what some people are calling lockdown. Um, and for most of the, uh, of the kind of European region, it's, there is some initial evidence um, that the, the lockdown is taking effect. Some countries in Europe obviously have, were, were seeded earlier and have larger epidemics like Italy and Spain. And then also there's, you know, Germany is, a, is perhaps a little bit of a, an outlier in Europe, but it seems to be having a much smaller um, growth at the moment. And then um, kind of over to the US where there is, you know, it's a huge population there with very different levels of, of intervention across the whole country. So it's a, a mixed picture there. And then, and then finally, the, you know, the lower middle income countries, which are on average have been seeded a little bit later and for which we don't have quite as good data. Um, there's, you know, there's, there's mounting evidence of, of epidemics growing there. And that's obviously a, an area of, of real concern. And there's a, a lot of effort now going into understanding what's happening there and how it may be different to other, other uh, examples. So you mentioned countries have implemented several measures. Are lockdown measures working? So the, the best evidence that we have, and, and we use the term lockdown to describe stringent social distancing, which is that people are trying to apply it in lots of different places, but it must be, it's being uh, complied with at very different levels, we would imagine. So we can probably speak most about the, the UK and especially around London, the evidence is from the, from the hospital data <laughs> that it is beginning to work, um, that there is a, uh, a reduction in the rate at which people are going into hospitals. So there is clear evidence from the actual uh, infection data that it may be working. And then we have lots of other kind of proxy data about how people are moving and how they're behaving that also suggests that it is, that it is working. What will exiting this social distancing lockdown look like? I think, I don't think it's gonna look the same everywhere and if we look around the countries that are the populations achieving good control at the moment there are different mixtures of interventions in place so i think it's it's probably important um that we start to think about um exiting lockdown as as a um more that's not quite as simple as one policy takes over from lockdown so it'll be a combination of things um, I am sure that the evidence suggests countries that are able to do very high levels of testing have many more options um, to allow people greater social flexibility. I'm sure that maintaining the very best infection control in hospitals is going to be a key part of this. And then there will be like some really um, interesting and, and innovative solutions that will play a part. For example, you know, contact tracing based on a, on a mobile phone app is something that's, that, that's being looked at. Um, so I think the, there's going to be some really innovative solutions, but I don't think it will there'll be one size fits all for even kind of one country or, or, or across large areas. And will there be different groups that will exit lockdown at different times? Um, I think that's possible, but, but very difficult. So one of the things that has been talked about um, is the possibility of, a, of an immunity passport where people can demonstrate they've got antibodies because a significant number of people, in, especially in some countries, have now been infected. But that's going to, there, there's a bit of, of really important science to do. Um, there's, there's two really kind of difficult aspects to that. First is accurately detecting the antibodies um, because having a quick, safe test that's also accurate is, is not straightforward. It's very difficult. And then the other thing is, interpreting the level of antibodies. Not everybody gets exactly the same response. So we need to understand what a particular level of antibodies means in terms of your protection going forward. Um, so it's a, it's a really important and exciting you know, idea, and I'm sure it will be part of, uh, of 
of the exit strategies that are, are going to be pursued. But there is some important fundamental science to do on that first. And is there any insight into when when this these exit strategies will be starting to be put in place? I think uh, that's going to vary a lot country by country, um, and I and I think the timing of them um, is a really difficult decision. It's not, and it's not driven just by the epidemiology. Not that any aspect of this is is driven solely by the epidemiology, um, but especially the timing. You know, the, the elected officials in these different countries have to weigh up um, based on um, economic data, social data and all the other aspects of people having reduced social contacts. They have to they have to weigh up when to try these more innovative and, and more focused strategies. Is there a possibility that after exiting the current social distancing measures, we might have to go back into lockdown at some point in the future? So, the, as I mentioned before, the preliminary evidence is that the stringent social distancing lockdown is working. It's it's slowing the epidemic and it may create a peak. So by having this really strong social distancing, we're going to have a peak and hopefully incidents will go down. We're going to try and come up with less crude, you know, more focused interventions that will allow us to continue to have incidents go down, to continue to have fewer numbers of cases, but not be subject to this lockdown. We can't know for sure how they will work. So if at some point in the future cases start to rise again when the lockdown is off and other measures are perhaps not working as well as we would have hoped, then as as population, as countries, we'll have to decide on the costs and benefits. My Right now, my belief is it's, it's likely we would choose to try lockdowns again because we wouldn't want to accept a large second wave if we managed to achieve a peak with these interventions for a, for a first wave that's my that's the way i feel right now but again it's a difficult decision and it's you know these things are probably three four five weeks away at the soonest if we've learned nothing else um through this pandemic we know that um this, the situation and our understanding can change very rapidly thank you so much for sharing your insights and your time i appreciate it you're welcome